Hello and welcome to Robot Masters. Today we're going to give a quick look at the training run. This is going to be on the Roomba i7. To start a training run, just select the Smart Maps tab. The i7 allows you to specify what room you would like to clean. Depending on the training runs, it takes anywhere from 2 to 5 runs to complete. Then you'll get a notification once the entire map is done. It's a good idea to pick up cords and any loose items. Also pick up furniture because once the map is completed, it cannot be redone. A training run is used for larger spaces since it's not actually vacuuming, so it has longer battery life. You can also have it vacuum and it will still map as well. Once you select the training run tab, it gives you a little information about making sure all the doors are open and everything's picked up. The robot will continue moving forward until it hits a wall or an object and then it will rotate and go the other direction. Once it gets to the edge of the wall, it will do a perimeter sweep to create a layout of the room. I like how quiet it is running the training run on both the Roomba S9 and the i7. So you could directly run this at night or while you're eating dinner, watching TV and it won't be bothered by the sound. You may have noticed a lot of bumping around. The robot will physically bump into the object just to make sure that it's an immobile object and it will use that information to create boundaries within the smart map. As it's sweeping back and forth, it's also determining how far away the walls are within each other. Just from my first training run with the Roomba i7, I have found that it navigates more efficiently and easier than with the Roomba S9. The i7 completed its first training run in an hour and 43 minutes, where the Roomba S9 did it in 2 hours and 5 minutes. So here's the transition from the hardware floor to my high profile carpeting. Once the robot got to the wall, it had no problem making a 180 degree turn. But on the S9, when I was doing its training run, it was struggling making that 180 degree turn. So I had to kind of help make that U-turn. I suspect it's because the i7 has a front wheel caster, which allows it to move easier over the high profile carpet. Whereas the S9 does not have wheels up front, but it can get its extractors closer to the ground, which provides better suction. Because the i7 didn't struggle like the S9 did on its training run, that's probably why it was able to complete the run in an hour and 43 minutes instead of the 2 hours and 5 minutes on the S9. I suspect that both robots have the same algorithm when creating the training run, so in reality it should be the exact same time. So you notice that the Roomba didn't continue in that area. It decides to go back into the kitchen and part of the front hallway because it likes to double check to make sure what it has bumped into is really an object. So it will sometimes navigate in open space just to verify that indeed it has got the right shape of the room. So you notice how it's just going back in the same area. It's just double checking to make sure it got everywhere. So I left the chair legs on purpose because I want to see what it would look like on the imprint map and also to see if it can recognize the chair legs. Uh, the Roomba S9 didn't and the i7 doesn't recognize them but it does do a decent job recognizing larger objects. It does uh, slow down before running into the wall, whereas the S9 will sometimes run into the wall full speed ahead. Now take a look at that side brush. Look how fast it's spinning. It's only one speed, so it definitely kicks a lot of dust and dirt up. So the i7 completed its first training run. Um, let me go ahead and show you a quick tip that saves you several hours. Um, usually you would have to do a second training run because if I go into the maps, this is the i7.
it's showing uh, new map still learning and it has 50% but as long as the map looks like your room and it does that's basically the layout by first floor I can just force it to create the map so keep in mind if it um, doesn't look like that or if you actually do customize the map you cannot go back to this step and have it remap you have to start over with a new training run that's one thing to note. So I'm just going to say, yeah, customize. And it's going to say, isn't done learning yet. So it's not quite complete. You still want to customize. And that's a little uh, trick I learned is, yes, you can customize the map. And I found that the robot navigates perfectly fine with just one train run. So let's go ahead and just say, yeah, sure. And we're going to just call this the main floor to keep it easy. Okay, so it kind of lit up over there. And now I can name it and uh, do them. So, so that's basically a quick look at the trading run and a short tip. All right, see you next time.